Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and another wild camping video. This evening we're up at Gunnerside in the Yorkshire Dales. I wouldn't call it our local area but it's about an hour and a half away from where we live. So we've come up to some old um, lead mines, an old lead smelting area which has been around since the uh, 1700s, 1800s. And we're going to test out some new equipment. If you watched my last video you'll have seen me using the DD hammocks gear. Um, We've also got some bivvy equipment, uh, a bivvy bag and a few a few mats. So we're going to bed down here uh, at the uh, end of the gill. Lovely view. Behind us here is uh, a lot of old buildings, which I'll show you in a moment. But I think what we're going to do first is get the tarp set up and roll our bivvy bags out. Because I think it might rain. It's looking a bit uh, dodgy and it's going to get very cold this evening. According to the weather forecast, it's going to be at least zero, possibly minus one, minus two. So we'll be able to put these uh, these bivvy bags to the test. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, so there's a bit of a hailstone shower came in there. So we decided to get the tarp up nice and quickly. So this is what we're going to be sleeping under tonight. This is just uh, a normal 3x3 DD hammock tarp. The one that I had over my hammock uh, a couple of weeks ago. Just give you a look at how I've got it set up. There's Tris in the background there, just admiring the uh, tarp tent. So you basically just lay it flat, pin the back ends out, and then stick your walking poles in, like that, and uh, creates a nice shelter, big enough for two people. I've um, put a guy line on the door there, and, and basically just put uh, ten pegs around. So that should do us. The only problem is, the wind was coming from this direction, but now it seems to be coming from that direction. Doesn't it, Tris? Yeah. Whose fault's that? Yours. <laughs> <laughs> Industrial mining ended in the valley over a century ago and the scars on the landscape still remain but nature is slowly starting to reclaim the land. There are a number of buildings throughout the valley and this one was a peat store. The peat was dug out from the moors above and used to heat the furnace. The remains of this building look more like the remnants of a monastery rather than an industrial building and in the quiet of the evening the area exhibits a degree of romance. However, there was nothing romantic about lead mining in the Victorian era. It was characterised by hard labour and poverty, and unfortunately many of the employees in these mines were women and children, whose reward for such hardship was usually premature death due to lead poisoning. The valley has an interesting history and it was a privilege to have the place to ourselves, but it was time to get some food, drink some wine and enjoy the evening. Morning folks, just been down at the Beck to filter some water for a coffee. That was a really, really cold night. There's a bit of a frost on the ground, but um, we were warm enough in, inside the bivvy bags and the sleeping bags. Uh, it's a bit of a condensation underneath the top. That all froze over in the night. But um, yeah, it's about seven o'clock. I've been up for about 20 minutes, just trying to warm my body up. Uh, keep warm a little bit <laughs> but I'm just going to get the coffee on now and start thinking about packing up
Yeah, so this is the uh, the Highlander Hawk bivy bag that I used last night. Um, we had the tarp over us, so I didn't really test it for waterproofness, but it definitely uh, kept us warm. It's quite good quality. It's got ripstop fabric. Uh, it's a little bit tight when you've got all your gear in mind, but that's because I had um, a Thermarest Neo Air Venture inside the bivy bag and then I've got this lovely, <laughs> really warm Icelandic uh, sheepskin and that, that is brilliant. It's quite light as well. I mean, it doesn't pack down very small. It's uh, high volume, but it's not uh, particularly heavy. Obviously got an inflatable pillow there. And then the the DD Dura 2 um, sleeping bag. I mean, this one's designed for a hammock, but it works really well in a bivy bag because it zips up the middle. Most of my other sleeping bags zip up on the left-hand side, whereas the bivy bag zips up on the right, so a bit awkward to get in. But um, yeah, I mean, I was lovely and warm in there. I kept my coat on, which I tend to do these days, but Tris has the same setup and she she uh, just had a fleece on and she was lovely and warm as well. So hopefully when the weather gets a bit warmer, we can do without the tarp and, and just sleep in the bivy bag and be able to wake up the, the views. So what I've done with the the bivy set up here is I've just kept everything in. So you've got the mat in there, the sheepskin, the the bivy bag itself and the sleeping bag. You can obviously, you know, they all come in compression sacks. But um, I'm just gonna pop it straight in my backpack like that. Uh, it was easy to get out, so you don't have to mess around, especially under the tarp. I mean, I guess if you were doing a multi-day trip, you'd need more space in your backpack, so you would, uh, just use the compression sacks, but I have got plenty of space. And the good thing about these uh, Fjallraven backpacks, I mean, Trish has got one as well. She's got a 45 litre Abisco backpack and it does exactly the same thing. It actually opens out like that, like a suitcase. So you can kind of, um, you know, if you've got stuff in the bottom and you don't want to take everything out of your sack, you can just open it like that. But it also works well for for this bivy setup, because I can just just pop that in there and uh, get it into the bag easy enough. Well guys, that's us done. We've packed all the gear up, we've left no trace, we've taken all our rubbish out with us. Um, it's been a really cold night, I'm guessing it was around minus two, but it was a good opportunity to test out our bivy bag system. Um, so we're going to take a walk back into the village now, it'll take us about an hour and a half. There's a cafe there, so we'll probably get a cup of coffee and a bacon sandwich I reckon. Uh, so I think that's it. So just like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.